Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be walking through activity 4-5 titled Auditing Folder Access. This is from the MCSE slash MCSA guide to configuring advanced Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2 services in preparation of exam 70-412. Um, this follows activity 4-4, of course, um, which was titled Classifying Files with FCI, the File Classification Infrastructure. Um, the FCI um, allows you to append and add certain properties to files so that you can kind of manage it securely. Um, for instance, make sure that users are only accessing the files they're supposed to, that they only have access to those files, and they're not able to get into files that they should not be able to access. Um, so this can help with that rather than just using NTFS permissions. Um, so a quick review of what we did in 4.4, since we're building on that in 4.5. Um, we set up some classification rules. Well, really one rule. So we set up the properties. Let's take a quick look. And so in the classification property, um, you can create new levels of classification, depending on how robust and how granular you want this to be. Um, by default, there's, I believe, low, medium, and high. So I added a few, and then we wanted to create a rule. So I applied my rule to this share, this document share. Um, and let me see if I can look directly into it. So this is for a confidentiality level. Um, it's looking for any files that contain the keyword confidential. Um, so for the most part, if your company or business is handling confidential information, it'll likely have the word confidential as the header up at the very top of the page, probably in the center. It'll often have it at the very bottom of the last page as well. Um, but this way we're using that keyword confidential to apply this classification rule so we don't have to go do it manually to every single file. The system will automatically detect that word confidential at the top of the file and apply the appropriate classification level. Um, the downside to this is if you have a document that does not need to be classified at all and just happens to contain the word confidential, well that file may end up becoming classified at the confidential level. Um, so you can tweak your settings as needed. Um, you can have it set up so that it'll only apply the classification level if it sees the word confidential three times, and then or two times. And you know you just need to mark your confidential documents at the top and bottom of every page, which is not a bad idea anyways. But that would also help reduce the amount of times it's false or the amount of times it's falsely classifying something that shouldn't be classified. So there we see that you can add other folders, other directories. And in the parameters here is where I actually set it to be. And when it sees the word confidential, when it sees it as a string, you can do it as a string that's case sensitive, in which case I would probably want this string to have a capital C. And that way if somebody's just typing it in the middle of a paragraph, it'll probably be a lowercase c, and the rule won't automatically classify it then. So that's one way to help minimize um, over-classification or unnecessary classification. For these purposes, I'll leave it as is. So again, minimum and maximum occurrences, you might set your minimum to two and have it marked at the top and bottom of each page or something like that. All right, so we set those up. Um, we went ahead and applied it. So I see in this file, I have confidential right at the top. And if I look into the properties, it's been classified with a high value. If I look at my other document that does not contain the word confidential, this is for public release, then it does not receive any classification because I haven't set anything up to classify this if it's for open release. All right, so that was a quick recap of the last activity. Um, now we want to enable auditing so we know when somebody accesses these files. Um, and so we're gonna be very broad scope here. You can make this as granular and specific as you'd like. So to begin, we want to first enable auditing. So on our classified file, we're gonna go to security and advanced, then the auditing tab. So we have no entries created yet. We're going to make a new one. Um, and like I said, this is going to be very broad. So I'm going to set my principal as everyone. 
if you are trying to identify whether or not a specific person is accessing files they shouldn't, you can make that person the principal here. Um, I want my type to be both successes and failures. If you're doing this in a production environment, you would probably want both until you have a chance to refine and prevent them from accessing the files that they shouldn't be able to access. And then just check for successes so that if they successfully get into a file they shouldn't, that's when you'll get um, an information log. And we'll review those logs at the end of this activity. I'm not worried about read and execute. I'm just wanting to know when somebody accesses a file. So I'll leave that as is. We're going to go ahead and add a condition. So this limits um, the logs that are created. It's not any time they access any file. It's any time they access a specific resource, a specific file, with a confidentiality of high in this case. So that way, I'm still very broad for anybody that accesses these files, but I'm only going to create log events for the high confidentiality. All right, once we have that set up, we want to go ahead and create a group policy that applies auditing to our domain controller. So we're going to create a new GPO and link it here. We'll call it enable auditing. There we go, if I can spell it correctly. And then we need to actually configure that. So we're going to go under computer configuration, under policies, window settings, security settings. We want local policies, but let me expand this here. And then the audit policy. So we have multiple options. Like I said, auditing can be as specific or as broad stroke as you'd like. Um, so I'm going to set one up for object access. And I want it defined for both success and failure. In the explain, you can get a full description of what your options are. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it as both. So that we've created a, a group policy object, we want to make sure that that group policy is applied to our domain controller, the server that I'm on. So I want to do a GP update and make sure that my server is using that policy now. All right, and then we want to go ahead and open our classified confidential document. And all we need to do is open it and then close it, and then we can go take a look at the event viewer to see what kind of log records were created just from that act of opening it. So it'll be under your Windows logs, under security. Let's go ahead and expand this out a little bit. And we're looking for the event ID 4663, which indicates object accessed. And so then we can see the specific date and time. We can then look into the details and we can see wh who the user was, what, what domain I was on at the time, and then I can see sp what specific file was accessed. So if a person came in and they weren't supposed to have rights to access this confidential file, but they did, then this would create an entry so you'd know exactly who, they'd, who accessed the file and then exactly what file they accessed as well as when. All right, um, let me open that back up. There is one thing to keep in mind when you're logging audits like this, is that that one act from a single file with a single user accessing it ended up creating two entries. And there's other auditing stuff going on constantly anyways. So the more broad stroke you are, the more files you're auditing, the more users you're auditing, um, the bigger this log file is going to get. And it's going to be very, very rapid, especially if you have dozens of users that you're auditing at once, or hundreds of files that you're auditing at once. Um, these logs will get massive very quickly. 
So the best thing for auditing is to try to limit it, narrow it down to a specific group of users, or if at all possible, just one or two users. And then again, narrow the, the field for files that you're auditing. You don't want to be auditing an entire shared drive on the network because this log file is just going to get too big to really read and comprehend what exactly is going on. Um, and then once you've audited and you've you know tweaked your security as needed, then you'll want to go back and disable auditing or just remove, in this case, remove the policy. And then again, run GP update to stop auditing file access to that file. Um, it looks like that pretty much covers everything for the activity, including the recap of the last activity. Um, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them for me below. I will try to reply in a timely fashion. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video.